So hi, my name is Glauber. Uh, I am the founder uh, and CEO of Turso. Uh, I, you know, I come from a background of like low-level systems programming. In uh, hell, on, hell in my life started when I met Pekka around 15 years ago. Uh, we were both coding for the Linux kernel. Uh, he was one of the maintainers of the memory management subsystem. Uh, and I was doing resource management for C groups, for containers and stuff. And then I had to get my work through him. And this is how our relation, situation ship started. Uh, we later joined a company. Uh, I was employee number three and he was employee number four. I've been trying to get rid of him since then, unsuccessfully, uh, called Scylla. Uh, you all, I think, uh, lo lots of people in your audience will know Scylla because the other day you read this amazing article about how Discord moved to Scylla. I mean, so like we wrote uh, Scylla as well, not as founders, but again, uh, super early employees. And then uh, when I finally decided I had enough uh, and I would uh, leave Pekka behind, I founded a company. But then when I noticed he was there uh, as my co-founder. Uh, so that's my story. Do you have anything to add or take away from that? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, that, so, so, so typically I just let Clubber introduce me as well. Since, you know, we actually do have uh, quite a bit of history. But just going back to the, the moment we actually met physically, I think it was in San Francisco. And this guy was coming Probably. to me because I was like the Linux kernel maintainer, right? So much more important than him, of course, right? So he comes to me, it's like, Pekka, you know, if I do this little tweaks, could we get it merged? And I think I said no. So I think that's the, that's the starting point. Uh, I, I had to, I had to bag. I had to bag, and like you see, <laughs> see, see how tables change, Pekka. See how see how things yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. And and also when Glover came to me, it was like, hey, we should we should start a company. I think I initially told him absolutely not. But that's that's roughly the you know, the delta of of our stories. That's 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 a lovely story. Yeah. I'm glad they. I'm glad. <laughs> Did he just say beg or bag? Beg. <laughs> like, please. <laughs> Guys, okay, Bisco, you're from Montana, okay? We all know we say none of our words correctly. Uh, all right, well, hey, that's good. So we, we, you know a thing or two about operating systems and databases, it sounds like. Would that be fair to say? Mostly Pekka. Okay, mostly Pekka, <laughs> no, yeah. Again, in, in all fairness, he is the, he is the smartest of the, of the two of us. So okay. okay, so you're yeah. the script kitty, the, the Linux kernel script kitty, and, and he is... The actual, the actual programmer. Yeah, which is why, by the way, both of us are on Max today because uh, I think after Linux, we're like, look. <laughs> I get so, that. So, but I, I actually, Glover used to be, you know, he actually knew about technical stuff. I don't know if he, you know, just in the past two years, at least he claims that he doesn't know anything anymore. But yeah, yeah. So you know, we, we, I think. Probably we probably in Linux kernel worked on most subsystems if we combine the, the yeah. stuff that we did. So. File system scheduler, memory management, uh, some drivers, and what what do you what do you vir think virtualization about as well? I don't. What do you think about the? Uh, there was an article that recently stated that all the async runtimes in Rust effectively are just crappier versions of operating 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 system uh, schedulers. How do you feel about that? Yeah. Uh, I actually wrote. Uh, uh, Runtime as well, uh, async runtime for Rust called Glomio uh, during my time at Datadog. I had a year at Datadog before, you know, when I was trying to get rid of Pekka. And then Datadog tried to hire Pekka, and they said, look, there is no way I'm getting rid of this guy. Let's just go and found a company, right? That's the, uh, but I wrote, uh, when I was there, I wrote, I wrote a, a async runtime called Glomio, which focused on direct IO. Uh, and so, but I, I don't know, I mean, compared to operating systems, I think it's a bit much, but like uh, Scylla was also, uh, Scylla was also built on a similar runtime for C++ that like does a lot of async and futures and promises and et cetera. And, and you kind of have to rewrite a lot of primitives from the operating system, right? That it, yeah. You might want to do your own memory management and et cetera. I think that calling it like an operating system is a bit much. Like virtualization was a different story. When we were working like on KVM and Zen and et cetera, there was this argument that like uh, this is essentially the operating system admitting that it didn't do it, it, its job well. So you need like a hypervisor and stuff like that. But like at the runtime, I think it's a bit much. Uh, it's it's supposed to be a lot more lightweight. And yeah. Okay. Good. Awesome. So you wanted to come on here and and talk about some some super cool things that are kind of coming down the pipeline, and then even potentially show me something pretty cool. I think we have to do it in TypeScript, right? Because that is your currently most supported library, correct? 
That's right. That's, that's right. fine. Yeah. We can. We can. We, we, but but can but we run it with we'll bun? It, that's right. We're gonna use bun. Okay. Because if I have to, because we could spend the next thirty minutes with me getting a webpack config I know. or a light <laughs> config. So I, I, actually, actually, Turbo the reason repo. the example is. It's in, yeah, ex exactly. So it's actually I use Bun as well because I just couldn't get the TS node and all that stuff working. So you know that's the no no one technically can. Uh, I I just I honestly at this point I just use uh, ChatGPT to generate uh, all of it because there's just there's just no possible way I can I can get these configs correct. So yeah. all right. Awesome. Uh, let's do this. So first, tell, tell us about the stuff that you have coming down the pipe, and then we'll take a quick little look at it. Uh, we're in the middle of our launch week, so we're announcing uh, a bunch of amazing things this week. Yesterday, uh, we announced that our free plan that previously allowed you to have three databases now allows you to have 500 databases. Uh, and then the plan for $29 that used to include six databases now includes 10,000 databases. And they're just normal, like squeal light databases, right? There, there's nothing like a, it's just a, you can just go and look that do per user stuff and, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, and what we're announcing today is that you can now get one of those squeal light databases uh, independently. You don't have to do this with all of them together and replicate inside your own, whatever you want, uh, your own device, uh, inside a, a server, a VPS. Uh, and then you're going to have like super fast latency. So it's the, it's the beautiful, it's the good things about Squealite. You can do the local reads, but Thurso, we're just going to keep your stuff in sync. Right? Okay, Pekka, so... Pekka wrote most of that feature. So like uh, he can probably... No, I didn't. It was features. Lucio and, and Piotr, so our team, yeah. from our team, who, who actually did most of the heavy lifting of that stuff. Okay, so what you're trying to say is that you, you, are, you have a feature in which you have your, your cloud-based database, right? Your Terso right. squeal light out there in the cloud. And to just achieve the world's fastest latency, so we're talking like on the microsecond level, you have yeah. a syncing feature that will bring it down and you can read from squeal light locally, locally. in your Docker, in whatever, from right there. Right. But all writes will be routed back out. So that way you have syncing and all that done for you. Exactly. Dude. You sound super smart. Yeah, you nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm pretty good at this. Uh, okay, awesome. I mean, that that's actually super cool because I mean th that reduces an entire bottleneck, right? Uh, one one thing that's very difficult uh, is that when you have a series. Did you, see, did you see that the league? My guy said that you're a genius. He's mistaking you for Tom. I know he's okay. mistaking me for Tom, but his name is literally Ligma Titsoff. So, you know, yeah. for me, I just don't, you know, I, 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 I put that in there, you know, like trustworthiness versus what he's saying. So, yeah. um, anyways, uh, because like, I can't tell you like how many of these, these little services you're going to come across. They're going to have three, four database calls, just aligning, uh, aggregating a bunch of information together. And sometimes they have to be serial, right? Uh, you can think of something like Netflix where we have, uh, videos and ratings. I know bringing up Netflix every time, but ratings are an independent service of videos. So you could imagine a world in which you could have both those data sets together where you're not doing multi hundred millisecond calls. Instead, you're doing instantaneous calls effectively. So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so somebody was asking actually yesterday uh, on, on X uh, that like, well, why, why can't you just put the Postgres database in the same VM or something, right? But it is exactly about this, you know, cascading query problem, essentially. So, you know, if you do these serial uh, queries, then, you know, once you get to the microsecond scale and, you know, just to make you love TypeScript a bit more, actually, if you use the Rust, well, you know, I, I know you love Rust as well. But if you actually, so the, the, actually what, what you get to is double digit micros, microseconds, right? But with, with serial, serialization and deserialization, it's, it's you know, around 100 microseconds or so. So you actually lose quite a bit of performance still with TypeScript. But, but nonetheless. And, and it's, not just, uh, it's not just performance. Remember what I said in the beginning, like our goal here was to create a database so easy that even Pekka could use. Like if you're replicating Postgres to your own VM and setting up mm -hmm. a resolution and it, it's it's a lot more complex than you just have a squeal light file, you read from it, you call a sync function to control the sync, that's it, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it's like essentially you know you have all the data in your application memory space, right? So that's uh you know it's this there's never going to be a faster way to to do that. But yeah, so so th that's uh, that's basically what, what we're trying to do with the 
we call them embedded replicas. Awesome, awesome. I like to see this. Uh, okay, so you, you want to? You said that you had a little bit of a demo you wanted to show me, um, yeah. Glauber. I know you technically sent me a link to this recently. Yeah. I'm going to be honest here. I didn't open Speaker it. Speaker Hartman. Speaker I didn't Hartman. open didn't it up. Open I didn't even look it. at it. So you're actually going to get the raw. <laughs> you're going to get. You're going to get the the raw squeal light version. Let's do of it. it. Let's do it. All right. So I'm going to. Are you are you are you going to drive or are you going to expect uh, us to do it? I, I will do the driving because uh, okay. I I just feel like I can. I'm a good driver, but I'm sure you guys could actually probably drive better at this point. But here I'm going to grab the link really quickly. Uh, GitHub ter Terso database. I assume. Can by, I just by the way, I had to. I had to explain to Pekka what Ligma is. I mean, this is the state of Europe. There you go. <laughs> so he 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 said, "What's Ligma?" <laughs> <laughs> Did he so, actually? So some some yeah. So some some of your you know some of the things just don't you know it's the European mind can't comprehend right. So. You know. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Nothing feels better. Did you, please tell me you just gave him the ligma balls? You didn't even didn't even didn't even give him like any of the the nice. Well, actually, this is what it stands for. So I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna do the whole uh, the whole repo. We're in yeah. here, and then the specific one that you actually had uh, me pointed to was called Remote Sync, right? So Remote right. Sync yeah. LS. I assume. Can I just NPMI? Was that how we get started? Um. Don't, there, oh, if oh. you want to just uh, show your audience like what exactly does it do, like we have a, a special image on the repo. If you want to open the browser and just show like a oh sure yeah just yeah, like yeah. a can you what's the setup of what that is and just a, can you show Glover me even you... made me to made me yeah do a picture. Where's this repo at that I can check out? What said what? You just said there's a repo that I could open up. Where's no no, no yeah this the 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 git the git thing repo so there's repo yeah so there's an image there. Oh, this one right here? Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit, bit hard to see. Cause here, let me... Dark mode. <laughs> that didn't... That did Ooh, not... Okay. Yeah, we, can th we can talk. We can talk. Who wrote this <laughs> image? I did, I did it, but like same people don't use dark mode, so... I'm not on dark mode anymore. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> just... Uh, it, it's it's super simple. Becca can just talk to it. It's the... Yeah, so it's just showing. Well, if there were these, you know, arrows, they would be showing that you know you, you know, you have the remote. So basically, the, the way it works is that you know you create a Turso well, cool. Oh, so here, here it is, go. right? So you create a database on Turso, like or it's a LibSQL server, right? And then in your application, you know, you use the LibSQL uh, client library, and then you know now boom, you have the embedded replica there. And then basically what you do is, you know, you can sync up your uh, replica by calling sync. And it essentially, so the way it works is that it's, it's more or less the same thing as we do with these edge replicas, right, on the server side. So it just gets all the write ahead log updates to your local database. And then if you write to the database, it will detect that and automatically delegate it to the server. That's, that's the way it works. Super simple. Uh, you know, you get super fast reads, and you know, as Clover mentioned, actually on on X, I think uh, you know that the writes just get delegated. You don't have to 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 worry about it. Okay. Let's uh, do it. By the way, I figured out what your problem was. You may, look at look at your image. It's transparent. <laughs> and so I I work on GitHub dark mode. Yeah. So yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, just blame it on me. So here I can here I can help you really quickly. Let me just do this. And I'll just get this little bucket and look yeah. at that. I've just fixed your image. Amazing. I you have you have bun you have bun installer. Yeah. yeah. Do I need to make a PR to the to, uh, to the repo? <laughs> if you make a PR, I will merge it. That's how it works. <laughs> Let's go. <Yeah. laughs> he trusts me more than you, Glover. This is fantastic. All right. Um, okay. Cool. So. How, uh, let's see. So I assume I can just start going through this so, because yeah. I, I have there's, everything. Yeah, there's instructions. There's instructions in the readme, right? So like creating the database and et cetera. Like a, All right. Yeah. Can I go through these one at a time? Let's do it. All right. I've, I've let myself be all out. I've tried to create myself into a old-fashioned, exactly uh, unused state right here. So there we go. We got the log. Hold on one second. I'm going to get logged in. I should have at least had that one. But I wanted, you know, I wanted the true authentic experience here. All right. Let's do this thing. Here we go. All right. So we're going to now create the, the database right here. There we go. Creating a quick database. It'll do that one. We're going to do a quick shell example. All right, there we go. 
We'll jump in here, connecting to the database. I'm going to grab these things right here, paste them all in. There we go. Everything's been pasted in. All right, first. So this this simulates a, a key card reader, right? Which is an example we thought of something local, that it's whatever, you, like a point of sale device. Or... There we go. I will do these things. There we go. So we have everything set right here. We have uh, DB uh, URL and DB auth token. I like how you have this right here because I typically leak this every time. In fact, I've gotten so bad at stuff that at this point in my life, I have this plugin where it, it saves me from just, from just messing things up at this point. I just do it so frequently. I, I had to go and get this. Now, true story that was created for you. Like it, it was whole, unironically all, all, created all the, for me. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, I, I saw one of your first streams where you were dealing with environment variables and I, feel, I felt bad for you. I mean, no joke. There we go. I, you, there we go. Glover's so valid. look at that. This is yeah, Glover's valid. This is this is remote. So what what we've done there is that uh, if you go look at the environment variables, uh, we Which... did not specify a sync URL. Like uh, the, those three environment variables that you copied, like unset sync URL. So there is no sync URL. Okay. And then there's the DB URL. So you, you're talking to to the database. So the database is the same. You can still use it remotely. And yep. then we do like 50 queries and take an average. Uh, you know, just a yep. That's 17 not milliseconds best, per query. Yeah. That's not the bestest way to measure latency. Like latency is a distribution, and we yep. want to see the P99 and the average. But look, for demo purposes, just do 50 of them, uh, and then like uh, tell me what's the average. Uh, so 17 milliseconds uh, from there to Denver. Now, the next step, you're going to do embedded replicas. OK. Right? So now I have a sync URL, which is the, the, what, what was the database URL becomes the sync URL. So, and the database URL is a file. OK. OK. And so there is an auth there. OK. So the database URL becomes the URL. And then my DB URL is now just a file local one, file local .db. File. Yeah. And okay. the authentication still there. I mean, the token's still there. You still need it, right? That's all good. Where where did this file actually get uh, placed at? It will be placed. Well, I mean, it hasn't been whatever you want. Right? It hasn't been it, 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 sank yet, right? Yeah. Okay. It, will, it will be created. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now I should be able to rerun this command right here, and we there should see the the magic of local. Yes. It's it's. Slightly, it's slightly faster. A little bit faster, which is again still slow for Rust standards. Like the Rust, uh, the Rust client can do this uh, in like 40, 50 millisecond uh, microseconds. Less, it should be less. Yeah. Long. It should yeah. be. Yeah. But this is not United States. This is microseconds, right? Just uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is the United States. We yeah. are at one millionth of a second. You did th oh, 134 yeah. millionths of a second. This is actually super fast. This go. is such a cool little feature. Hold on, can I look at the code? Let's look yeah. at the code really quickly just to see it. Do you like? Oh, look how beautiful this is. Clearly not. Clearly, I haven't been set up to use this thing yet. Uh, but anyways, uh, I'm just gonna turn off LSP. LSP, stop. We don't need it all in here. All right, because I think typically you're supposed to have uh, npm id types uh, types node. There you go. I think that should uh, LSP start. I think that should do. There you go. That got yeah, rid of it will, all of them, it will, except for it the will bun one. Complain about the bun names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, whatever, right? All right. So you just create the client. You create the mm -hmm. DB URL, the auth token, and potentially a sync URL. If the sync URL is obviously undefined, it just doesn't do anything else. It just uses this thing. So this thing obviously specified my local. This is my authentication. This is my sync URL, and that's that. Right. And so that's everything it. else. And this is the same. This is the same client for all executions, right? It yeah. doesn't matter if it's local, remote, it's just a, just a couple of variables. Nice. Look at that. It didn't even take, uh, you didn't even have to. This is nice. There's no, the, the client is none the wiser, whether it's local or not. Well, there's a, there's a call to sync, uh, and we put this in control. If you go to like line seven, there, yeah, line 11, seven. seven. Yeah. does this have, yeah. to, does and, this have to happen after you write, or is this a one-time call? So it basically has to happen whenever you need to sync. Uh, so uh, you can keep on writing, but it doesn't impact what you see locally. And this is actually something I 
I don't know if we want to keep this this semantics, but nonetheless, uh, you know, whenever you need the latest data, you call Sing, but you can keep on writing. The whole transaction gets delegated to the remote server. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, for example, you can call this. You can call this every one second on the background, and then there you go, right? So, or whenever you want, you have control over when you sync. Okay. Okay. Is there going to be an auto? So you're saying that there might be an auto magic sync option in which you can specify. You just don't have to so run the people, timer yourself. Yeah, people, you're just like people, sync every. 250 milliseconds or every second every five seconds whatever it is yeah so people are asking asking for that the, the reason we went with the, the manual uh, one was to you know because i i don't know what makes sense from a policy perspective right because as you were saying right every second every half a second like what is the what's the period but also like one thing which i'm thinking we should do is when you write maybe that should imply async so you always get the latest uh but uh, you know that's yeah. the Okay, so, there so there's, be some somebody, there's somebody in the options. stream asking, there's somebody in the stream asking, what is the divided by 50? It might just be that I'm an idiot. So where is that? Queries 25. There's something divided oh, by, yeah. yeah, you shouldn't divide by 50, you should divide by queries. <laughs> so the, the results are twice as bad uh, as the, you know, well, where, hey, where you read the 100. Yeah. So they yeah. are twice as good as they could have been, if you think yeah, about exactly. it. You know, like if you really yeah. think about it, they are twice yeah. as good. You know, it, I, I did find I did find a little bit suspicious that you did uh, 17 milliseconds to uh, the remote database. But hey, I, I don't know how close you are to to Denver, so it, it's possible. Oh, that uh, explains. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah, you guys yeah. don't know about South Dakota and internet? Maybe, maybe it's super good. I don't know. Yeah. All right, hold on. Let me let me just go back to here. I'll just do it from here. They want me to reset up my uh, environment variables. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, and cannot find module this. Wait, I thought it just does it. Oh, doesn't it just do it? Oh, is, yeah. is it because I installed just, something? Did I ruin something maybe. again? You, you fucked it up, man. You By the way, can I hard. say can I say this on your stream? Maybe I shouldn't say it on your stream. Please don't. Family Please friendly. Don't. Yeah. Just... There we go. There okay. We go. So that's yeah. A... This this is more realistic. This is more in line with what I see. Just to... so I should be able to go uh, unset seek URL, do this thing, and now we can see the other way. And now for fun. There you go. Just for fun, let's hit it with that old TS node uh, and hit that query. Oh, you got errors. You can't just be tossing yeah. out errors in here. Uh, it's okay. Uh, yeah, because yeah, we, it's we, also we, using the bun. Yeah, so so Globe wrote the code. Right? Oh, yeah, so it is using, using bun. Yeah. yeah. So. I'm, not a, I'm not a JavaScript guy. I mean, uh, I we, we can a lot see, of time. We can clearly see yeah, that. You, you can clearly see that. I spent I spent a lot of time trying to find a function in both Bun and Node that would uh, measure time in less than milliseconds resolution. I did not find one. Node uh, has performance API, in... if I'm not mistaken. But that's but that's milliseconds. No, the performance should be microseconds. There, there's a there's Is an HR right? time. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's Node. Okay. Uh, HR okay. time. There you go. HR time. Yeah, HR time will give you high oh, resolution I, I... time. Which is, uh, I That's think it's the, equivalent to yeah. get time, uh, the C API, where you get, uh, I think Amazing. you get like seconds and, mic and nanoseconds or some nonsense. And you have to like. That's the stuff I was looking for. You have to yeah, like put it back I'm, together I'm... yourself. Like it's just some sort of old timey thing. Also, you are measuring the console log. So I'm going to go in here and I'm yeah. going to delete that. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to go like this uh, const to print. I'm going to throw that in there. And we're going to go. Uh, Oh, I don't even want to. I don't even want to technically grab any of this. Whatever. To uh, print push uh, rows. Uh, this is not assignable to never. Oh God! Oh, it's the never one. Shut up. Gosh, I hate. Sometimes I just hate TypeScript. You should just remove the types bar. I'm just. I know. The TypeScript is like, dude. I cannot possibly yeah. understand this 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 craziness that you're asking me to do. Uh, hold on. To print push rows uh, as any. There you go. Any is not a never. Any is just not a never. Okay, there you go. You are now an, an any. Put that in there. We'll do this. Then we'll console log uh, to print. There we go. And now let's take that out. And let's not use NPX. And let's bun query. There we go. So we got 36 yeah. milliseconds per query. Pretty good. And then let's do the whole uh, DB uh, export DB... URL sync. There we go. We get the other one. Redo it. There you go. 123. Yeah. I mean, look at the difference, though. The difference is is quite a bit. Like, practically speaking, what does this equate to? 
The difference is taking effectively 900 mil a second versus three milliseconds. 300 X, I sent it. Yeah. Roughly. Which, which is why, by the way, I just left the console log in there and whatever, because look, the difference is so big that it doesn't like... Yeah. The console log but, doesn't but, even make a difference. Yeah. You're just like, it's just so big, but, it doesn't but, even matter. But, but just to drive the point home, like this is still slow, right? Uh, you know, in relative terms, because it should be like, so, so the, because what is happening is most like all of the, the you have the query engine, uh, SQLite query engine, it's it's native call, right? And then the wrapper on top of that is, is Rust. We spent quite a bit of time trying to, you know, not add any extra, uh, you know, overhead. But then what, what, basically what we did is we built the NPM package, uh, you know, just a layer on top of the Rust crate, right? So, you know, it's it's insane how much, even with Bun, which I assume is super optimized. So, so yeah, I think there's still actually performance left on the table. But on the other hand, right, so, you know, we, we talked about the, the, the use case where you do serial queries, right? So this is, you know, compared to going remote, this is plenty, plenty fast already. Yeah. So. And there are two more. There are two more uh, scripts in there. Uh, one call expire and one call validate. I think because this this example is like somebody with a card. Then you check if the card is valid or not. Like so, one of them is going to expire the card, and the other one is going to validate the card. Uh, and then you will see that like uh, those are like it doesn't matter in which mode you are. They will always write remotely. So if you are in the uh, uh, embedded replicas mode in which you are and you call expired, uh, you will see that uh, it, it will take a couple of milliseconds, right? All right, there you go. It took 134, uh, 124 yeah. milliseconds and then validate will also take some time. Yeah. If I expire and then I query, does it change the query? No. Yeah, yes. Oh, expired, it, yeah. Expired, expired is, one. is one now. Just, yeah. Okay, nice, nice. And that all came because back there super, is a super sync, fast. Because yeah. there, there, there is a sync call in the beginning of the script, right? Just to, there we go. They're all non-expired, and they're all super fast. This is awesome. This is great. This is fast. This is blazingly fast. I'd give this a very blazingly fast rating. Does that have the blazingly fast seal of approval? I think uh, it has. I think it does. I, I can see your audience, by the way. I don't know if they're trying to offend me, like uh, behaving like a bunch of degenerates like that, but calling me Joe Rogan is not offensive. <laughs> <laughs> hey! I'm... They, they're a very popular and in shape individual. <laughs> oh. Exactly. Damn, just, you uh, got me. I yeah. wish I got a hundred million dollars to talking to a microphone. Damn, there Damn. you go. Like just uh... burned. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Joe. <laughs> Man, getting wrecked. Uh, all right, hey, uh, this was awesome. <laughs> Thanks for showing me this. I'm pretty excited about this. Um, this makes it because I always liked the file because I always did all the file stuff because I just didn't want to have to. I don't want any of the, the slowdowns. I don't want to have to think about anything. I just delete databases, retry my schema, there try different things. And this feels pretty cool. This feels like a really great step where I can have all the speeds in the universe. Yeah, and, and like this mode is not, uh, some people will ask us so just to toss it out there. Like it's not something you would use in a serverless environment. Yeah, you obviously can. in a serverless environment, you don't have the file system. But if you have your API running on anything that has a file system, then now you can replicate your database locally. And then as you scale out uh, and create more copies of your API server, now you have your database like always locally. So again, SQLite was always able to do this, but you don't have the sync. So what we bring into the table with this is the sync uh, and working with uh, server environments. Uh, one good question, which is uh, 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 replication, is it region locked? Uh, depends. Uh, this if because we have, we have the replication on the platform as well, right? This replication that you're doing uh, on uh, embedded replicas, no, but it's up to you to, like, we don't have anything to prevent you uh, from, we have the tools to allow you to create the GDPR compliant thing, but Tours is not going to prevent you from uh, replicating uh, in anywhere, right? Just to, okay. You would have to be careful to say, hey, don't, don't replicate in Europe, which is, okay. the best way to be GDPR compliant is just don't do business with Europe. It's just <laughs> That's the easiest way to avoid GDPR is yeah. just avoid GDPR. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I'm just joking, of course. But the guy. <laughs> yeah, so, so now, now, now you know why why we made Albert the CEO and me just the yeah. CEO. Like he's the smart guy. Yeah, this 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 seems good. Uh, okay, so so you can actually choose if you want to have region lock, if you want to have it globally, if you want to be, able, yeah. or you can lock out now, specific on, regions. On the it's platform, all based on programming. Like on, yeah. 
It's all based yeah. on you doing it. So it's more like an AWS fashion where AWS gives you yeah. all the tools to do anything. You just have to choose that, to do right. that yeah. thing. When you replicate to our regions, then you can control, like how you can create a group uh, and say like those databases cannot be replicated outside this group. But the moment you do embedded replicas, uh, at least for now, I mean, we're obviously, we're releasing this thing today, right? So we're very well, uh, we would love to hear more about like how people want to use it. Uh, but we don't have anything at the moment to say like uh, control where you can replicate it. Just to... Okay. Uh, let's see, are rights made to the local first? Just to be clear, no, 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 no. That's why they, they the always sync. go to the rim. Yeah. So the the whole model of Turso is base is basically you have a primary primary somewhere, right? And and that is basically there to coordinate the writes so that there is a single writer at the time. And by the way, so SQLite still has this limitation of a single writer at the time. So that's the way it works, right? So the the, the mutation happens on the the primary server, and then you know that just gets replicated out. That that's the model. Okay. Well, someone says I'd love to use this, but this, uh, but microservice sucks for this. Is this why? is this a true statement? I don't know why I... microservices suck for this. Yeah. It sounds like they would be if effectively if you own the machine or you own the process of owning the machine, yeah. then you could also sync, and then your machine would just simply be synced and fast. Correct. Yeah, I actually, I actually think this is great for microservices because now you can have a copy of the DB locally on your microservice. You can do whatever you want. And you're never concerned about, oh, am I, are my queries destroying the DB or overloading the database or whatever? Just play for local copy, right? Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, I think at some point in the future, we're going to see the term micro serverless, where you have a constellation absolutely. of microservices that are wait, all serverless. Wait until, wait until interest rates goes to zero again. You're going to see all, this, all sorts of crazy stuff coming back. All, all the crazy stuff is coming back, <laughs> and I cannot wait for yeah. micro serverless. I cannot wait for it. Yeah. Micro front ends, micro <laughs> serverless. We got it all. It's going to be coming yeah. down. A serverless front end. Absolutely. Front-end. Serverless front end. Yeah. They do have. We cli- have serverless servers. We do. We do have a client. Yeah. We do have clientless clients. HTMX, really, when you think about it, it's just. Yeah. It's just replicating the server. It's beautiful. All right. Hey, thank you so much for all of this. Thanks for coming on. I uh, really appreciate it. My pleasure, that. man. Yeah. See uh, you. This sorry, cool. sorry that I brought Pekka along, but... Uh... <laughs> Don't worry. The only thing you truly have to be sorry about is his yeah. microphone. I think everything else was yeah. really, really great. <laughs> My microphone. And I spent, I, spent, yeah, I spent money on this shit. You know, he's talking about me, but like, I spent money oh, on this yeah, yeah, yeah. What can I do? I'm not a pro, man. I, I get it. I, I, get I, it. I do apologize. You're absolutely not a pro. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right. Take care, everybody. See you, folks. Bye.